I am breaking the rules with my very first question because I'm posing it to both of you. I always love talking about the value of having a good scene partner. And you two have so many super emotional conversation driven scenes together in this show. So what is something that the other did for you in those moments that you really appreciated and maybe brought something out of you that you couldn't bring out of yourself? I want to take this one first. Um, Zach and I work in very different ways. I am very, very like upfront with my insecurities. I'm very theater girl. I'm very cerebral. And Zach is very, pay me. I'm going to show up and say the words that are written on the page. And so I would sometimes get in my head and, and turn to Zach for like affirmation that like art is the most important thing. And I truly expressing my art and Zach would be like, just say the words, Kate just just be here you're fine you're fine you're fine and i think without that those days would have been a lot longer yeah i'll speak to that um in that i think what kate brings to every scene and it made those scenes i don't want to say easy to do but like she listens like it just makes you feel like someone's listening to you and when you're going on and on about death or about whatever um and it makes you want to listen to them as well uh, and she's just so present. And so, yeah, we have very different styles. You know, I know she would um, have a backstory for every, every piece of clothing she was wearing. And she'd be like, what about your sweater? I'd be like, I don't know, it was in my trailer. <laughs> told me, they told me to put it on. So I, I guess this is what Riley wears. Um, and, uh, but within all that, like our different ways of coming to it, um, I think, you know, she was a lot of fun to work with because like all you can ask for in a scene partner is to listen to you and to be there. And, um, she, she really was. And she did that for me. Like, I, I really am forever grateful. And, um, you know, cause I had to do a chemistry read with her. She already had the part. I was trying to win the part. Um, she claims that the part was mine to lose, which may or may not be true. However, I have had, I would have said it to with, anyone. <laughs> yeah, but I've had chemistry reads with people where you're like, dude, you already have this job. Like, and you're, um, so she was so giving from that moment when we were strangers, um, and uh, yeah, it was really cool to, uh, it, was, it was fun. I had a lot of fun working with it. I think it's hard at, at a certain point, it's hard to describe what it is. And, and I guess that's what chemistry is, right? That on paper, Zach and I work in different ways, but on the day it was easy. We made it easy for each other to go to the places we needed to go. I always laugh when people are like, okay, we're gonna have you do a chemistry read. I'm like, I'm gonna act, uh, clearly I'm gonna like pretend to get along with this person great. like. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's why sometimes when you have a bad chemistry read, you're like, what is this person's, what is wrong with this person? <laughs> yeah, and I'm like sitting there trying to be like, no, you're awesome. You're great. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like a jerk. And you're like, what? okay. Yeah, I don't know why. Anyway. I, yeah, it's true. It's true. But Zach, I feel like would have chemistry with a potted plant. He's just that kind of giving, loving person. I have no chemistry with potted plants. I kill them all. So I envy you. Me too. No. <laughs> right. So Kate, thanks for the compliment, but you're so wrong. So many murderers here. Yeah, not, not with purpose, I swear. I want to follow up on one thing Zach brought up for you, Kate. What is a seemingly insignificant little detail, even if it is a part of her wardrobe that you came up with a backstory for that no one's going to find out, but was important to you. Oh yeah. In Aaron's house, there is a, a, like a whiteboard next to her phone. And there's a note that says called Jim. And I literally spent 20 minutes being like, who the fuck is Jim? What, who's called, is that my mom's note? Do I need to call a Jim? There's no Jim on this fucking island. And I was wandering around set asking people who Jim was until Mike literally was like, please go back to your room. You're making everybody wear PPE all the time so you can find out who Jim is. And I was like, all right, Jim's the plumber. I get it. Okay, that makes sense. I believe in that. Um, yeah. Zach, this, this question might be coming from the fact that I've seen two really intense Hamish performances back to back now, but who, what is it like being yelled at by him on set? In particular in episode five, when he's just screaming, how does it make you feel? Just as a, as a viewer, I am scared for you as an actor. Um, you know, you're, I, I, when I was in that moment, you're a little like, this dude's crazy. Like he's crazy. And you're a little like, what, like this guy believes in angels and what, like he just sucked my blood and he's talking about God, like, and I, it doesn't really show in the scene, but I, the whole time I'm looking for an exit. I'm just like, like, can I get out over there? Can I get out over there? Because 
I gotta get the fuck out of here. Um, so it's, yeah, and Hamish is amazing. It's kind of funny too, because Hamish and I were friends before this project. Um, so it was kind of, it, which is so fun because like Kate and Hamish were my two like main scene partners. Uh, and it's so different with each of them in great ways. And you're clearly playing different characters. And I didn't know Kate before but we had the more intimate stuff and Hamish I knew really well, but we had this thing where we were supposed to not know each other. So it just was kind of like an interesting dynamic, um, but a lot of fun. He's, yeah, he's a lot of fun to work with. He's an amazing actor. When I found out that he was doing the part, I was like, that's genius. Like, I can't imagine anyone else in this part. I, it would be so boring. Um, no offense to Mike. <laughs> But no, but those Hamish homilies just, were riveting. Just yeah. that, yeah. When you were sitting there listening to those monologues in person, those homilies in person, it's it was exactly as exciting as it is on camera. This and that other project I was referencing, it's it's the type of scenario where he is just next level and nobody else could play the role that way except him. He is mind-blowing in those things in particular, but pretty much everything I've ever seen him in. Yeah. Let's talk about that boat scene now. Kate knows I, I like to harp on this one because it's it's incredible. Zach, I'm curious about your conversations with Mike in terms of figuring out exactly what drove Riley to make the decision to go out that way. Was there ever a point where he considered fighting? Uh, was, there, was there ever a point where he considered not necessarily putting Aaron in that situation? How did you kind of land on where you did in the final product? You know, uh, well, Mike and I didn't have any conversations about it. I kind of, the way I come to things are, um, it's already on the page. <laughs> this is what we're doing. And I'm only gonna have the conversation if it doesn't make sense to me. And it made sense to me, you know, it, it, given the world we're in and the person that Aaron is, and the person that Riley is, he knows like, look, I'm gonna, what am I gonna run around being a vampire for the rest of my life? No. Um, and the only way I'm going to be able to convince Ryan, Aaron, is if she sees it. Like she hasn't, like no one's ever gonna believe this and once they see it so it's just kind of like look I'm gonna this is gonna happen it, I, I, I hate to like traumatize her but the only way she'll ever maybe um take my advice and just row to the other shore is if she sees it uh so yeah I think it just on the page it made sense I bought it um and so which makes it so much easier as an actor because you're like okay I believe this so I can go and pretend this there's one other layer to that I really wanted to ask you about. It's it's the idea of him having had that vision for so, so long and then actually finding himself in the middle of it, but then discovering that someone else is in it with him. What do you think that meant to him? Um, I think it meant it just kind of like, um, it's validated that this is the choice. It's like my subconscious, like I've been, you know, and he's not someone who really would believe that people can see the future or whatever, but it just kind of validates like, yeah, this is what I have to do. Like my subconscious has been telling me this, it's been forecasting this. Um, so as someone who no longer believes in God or a higher power, whatever there is, it's telling me this is what I have to do. And it's been hinting at it for a while. I have to let you guys go. I've already been greedy and had so much time, but I could talk about this show all day long. Huge congratulations. Thank you guys for uh, for talking to us today. Of course. Thank you, Perry.